Hello, Holy Cross. And we are discussing social studies here with fifth grader Benedict Griffin. Say hello. Hi. And with second grader Basil Griffin. Say hello. Hi. Okay. So what we did here is take some of the standards from the fifth grade curriculum on the colonial economy, things like um, the slave trade, the, the moral aspects of that, how they relate to civic virtue. So I'm going to ask these kids some questions about what they learned and what it means for today. So here we go. Um, you know, one of the things that we talked about, guys, was um, in reading in the book that uh, the colonists came um, to New England, but there were already people uh, who were here. And uh, who were those, those people who were already here? Uh, oh, uh, well, the Native Americans were here first. Yeah, and you've learned a little bit about, Benedict, the Native Americans were here first. You've learned a little bit about some of those tribes. What are, what are some of the tribes you learned about? Like, um, wow, well, the Iroquois, the, um, the Hurons. I mean, yeah, the Hurons and the Iroquois. And one of the things before I move to Basel is part of what you've done at the uh, homeschool is you've learned about a saint who interacted with the Iroquois. Is that right? Okay. Who was that? Uh, who was that saint? Uh, saint Isaac. St. Isaac Jogues. And can you tell us briefly the story of St. Isaac Jogues? So, he grew up in Europe and wanted to go visit the Native Americans in America and be a missionary. Um, but his parents didn't want him to do that. But, um, but eventually he took a ship there and uh, lived with them for a while. And then... Um, and then got caught in a battle and was made slave by the Mohawk tribe. Oh. And um, and eventually he was killed by them. He was killed by the Mohawks. Now, when he first came, did he join the Iroquois? No. Uh, okay, so because he was European. But he joined the Native Americans to he, evangelize them. Yeah. He joined the Hurons. The Hurons. But, and and they, did he get along with them? And then the Mohawks saw him as an enemy? Well, uh, he got along with... Uh, he didn't get along with. He got along with probably half of the Hurons, and he, and a lot of the uh, Mohawks also liked him. It's just um, a few didn't, and they killed him. They killed him. So Saint Isaac Jokes, they call him one of the North American martyrs and a great saint in the Catholic Church. So uh, so great. That's uh, that's excellent, Benny. Now as we um, go forward, there was another group of people that we learned about in the colonial era and the colonial economy. And those were people who were not colonists because they didn't have, and they were not Native Americans and they were not slaves. They, um, what, it was a, what was that other group, Basil? Um, New England. Yeah, the New England, and they were indentured. What? The indentured servants. And what was that category? How, why were, they weren't slaves, but why, like, what, like. They, so they were really poor. They were poor. So they made deals with rich people. Like, yes. Okay, so I'll serve you for five to seven years, and you give me all the money and food I need to get to America. Yeah. Because you're running cheap land. Yeah, yeah. So those are indentured servants. Yeah, you serve for five, five or seven years. So indentured servants were a part of that. So let's talk, though, now about the, the, the final group that I mentioned briefly, the, the slaves. And, um, the you know, we talked about the triangular slave trade. So... So Benedict, um, you know, one of the things that, that we talked about is, um, is that the slaves um, were part of uh, three ship sailing, you know, kind of three legs of a journey. What were those three legs? If the, the first one started in New England and it went to Europe, then what was that leg? Like, or what was the purpose of taking the ships from New England, the colonies, to Europe, to England? Well, they wanted to um, trade and get what they needed for their country. Yeah, so they brought goods. They, you know, they brought, um, you know, things that they. Uh, do you remember one of the things that maybe they brought over to Europe from the colonies? Um, like they, you know, we talked about. You asked what the word. You asked what this word meant. Um, indigo. What? What was that? Oh yeah. Uh, um, yeah, a dye for clothing, yeah. And then they would make the clothes in Europe, so good. And then they brought um, the guns and things from 
from Europe, and where would they take those to when they um, Africa. Were to Africa? And then in Africa, um, what would what would they put on the ships from Africa back to New England? Slaves. Slaves, and that that's where we get the triangular slave trade. And um, so that went on. And uh, one more question for Benny, and then a final question for Basil. Um, Benny, um, that went on for uh, for a long time, and that was one of the great injustices. Mm -hmm. um, but there were other smaller injustices that the tr um, that the chapter talked about. Why were the colonists so angry at England? You know, like um, like we learned even a little bit about like the Boston Tea Party. The, the colonists were very mad at England um, about economics. What were they mad about? Well, they well, was, they um, had to pay high taxes mm -hmm. and and they couldn't really uh, like and they had to make stuff for England and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they said you can only sell it to us in England. And then this jumps ahead of where the, the book is now. But um, what happened at the Boston Tea Party? I mean, this is a little bit ahead. This is like now getting closer to the revolution. But what happened there? So, um, there were a, uh, a bunch of people that um, dressed up as Native Americans, went onto the ships at night, and um, and got the uh, and took the um, the boxes of tea and threw them into the harp. Threw them into the harbor. Why? Why would they throw? Why were they mad? Why would they throw the the tea into the harbor? Whose tea was it? Uh, well, it was England's. Tea. Yeah, it was England's tea, and um, and they were they were upset about that. And so yeah, that was the the Boston uh, the Boston Tea Party, and um, and so you know the other the other quick event that was right around that time too was the Boston Massacre. The colonists were upset, but what happened there? So, um, somebody insulted a British soldier, and that, and the British soldier pushed down the person that insulted him, and then, um, and then a bunch of people got mad and started throwing snowballs at the soldiers, and then the soldiers started firing at the people. Yeah, and it became a massacre. And you know, when we can, when we conclude in a few minutes, we're, we're going to talk about it because in society today we see that um, violence, you know, can erupt where um, some of these issues of justice and, and um, injustice end up, you know, costing people's lives. So the, the Boston Massacre was a really important event. One other potential sort of thing I want to ask you, Basil, um, as we go to the colonial era, is obviously the slave trade was the primary example of grave injustice. But to, to connect it to the Catholic Church, do you remember, I, I shared a little bit of a story about Jesuit priests at Georgetown University. So they had slaves, many of the religious orders, like the Jesuits, in the 1600s uh, and 1700s um, uh, had slaves. And so um, during the 1700s, the, the Jesuits at Georgetown decided um, they were going to, they didn't want to have slaves. So what happened there? They, and so sit up, please. Said, um, and you so can look at the. Yeah. So they were, uh, we're priests, so we shouldn't be having slaves. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to get rid of them, but then they thought, well, we don't just, we don't get nothing for, we're not just going to free the slaves. We don't get nothing for them. Mm -hmm. So they decided to sell them. They sold the slaves to and these then, people who were saying they could really need slaves at the front. And what did they do with the money they got for the slaves? They built this huge building that is now at Georgetown University. It's still one of the major buildings at Georgetown. And so about 10 years ago, I said they started to examine this. And they were like, is this right? Like, we built this building with money that we got by selling slaves. So what did Georgetown do to try and do something about that? So they said... If you were like if one of your ancestors was um, a slave, you could go to Georgetown University for free. For free, and we said that's a form of like them doing restitution or reparation, yeah. or or what's like the penance. other word? Like what? Penance. Penance. Yes, exactly. It's a form of penance, 
And um, so, you know, the last thing I just want to, um, I just want to share, uh, have you guys share a little bit is um, one thing that as we think about all this, and if you could sit up just a little bit, Baz, and then, and, and I'll give you each a chance. I'm going to start with Basil and then we'll conclude with Benny. As you think about, um, thinking about all these issues like the slave trade and all of these bad things that happen that people responded, you know, today, can you think of something that would be wrong in our society or bad that is important to address through like, you know, as citizens, some, some bad thing that's happening in our time? Uh, um, like coronavirus. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, okay, but the coronavirus or, you know, like we've talked a little bit about kind of, um, uh, you know, the, the um, some of the problems of, um, of, of inequality between different types of people, you know? Racism. Like racism, exactly. And that's something we've got to think a lot about, about like racism. So the last question then is for you, Benny. The colonists uh, had the Boston Tea Party and they did, um, uh, they did some acts like that. You know, there were other slaves who revolted. Um, what is one thing, if we look at racism today, how could, how can people, like what's one thing that people could do to try and make that better? We've seen all kinds, I mean, there's all kinds of answers. People have protested, there's an election coming up. People could, um, uh, you know, uh, write letters or, or donate money. What's one thing that you think, as we talk a lot about, you know, kind of trying to make things better, what's one thing that you think our country really needs right now? Well, our country, um, well, um, I mean, I think that you should um, probably... I mean, you just want to be nice to them, and then other people might see you being nice to them, and then want to be like the other people. Yeah, so a personal example. That's really like good. Penance. Penance. Like penance. So my, we might still need to be doing some penance towards people, right? And doing it personally, too, and that other people might see. I think that's a really, a really good example. So, um, okay. Well, I just want to thank our guest today, Benedict Griffin. Basil Griffin, why don't you guys say thanks for listening? Thanks for listening. Thanks. Bye. Oh, and we will see you in the next installment from the Griffin House.